Turns out, blue-eyed people don't have blue eyes. It's not that brown eyes have brown pigment and blue eyes have blue pigment. The eye's iris, that part that has a color, consists of two layers, the front one and the back one, and another layer in between them, the stroma. Each of these layers has some melanin in it. Melanin is a pigment present in your body that determines your skin, hair, and eye color. Melanin protects your eyes from the sun. Almost all people have dark brown or yellow pigment in the back layer of the iris. But it's the front layer that's responsible for your eye color, and the amount of melanin there determines it. Brown-eyed people have a lot of melanin in both layers of the iris. Blue-eyed people don't have melanin in the front layer. So basically, their eyes have no color, but they just appear to be blue because of the scattered light. Here's how it happens. So, the back layers and the front layer of a brown eye have melanin. When the light enters the iris, most of it is just absorbed, and the eye color looks brown just like it is. This is different for blue-eyed people. The back layer has some melanin, but the front one hasn't. The stroma in between them has some particles that interact with light. So, the light that enters isn't absorbed, but reflects back or scatters. It makes the eye appear blue. That's the reason why the sky or water appears to be blue too. If the particles in the stroma are bigger, they scatter white light as well. Together, the scattered blue and white makes the eyes appear to be gray. Think of the sky again. When there are many white clouds covering the sky, it looks gray too. Green eyes have a bit of yellow pigment in the front layer of the iris. So, when the light enters, some of it is absorbed, but some is reflected back. The yellow pigment mixed with the reflected blue gives the green color. With hazel, it's a bit of brown, a bit of yellow, and a bit of blue reflection. There was a time when people with blue eyes didn't exist at all. Scientists believe that originally, all humans had brown eyes. But then, around 10,000 years ago, people with blue eyes appeared. Now, blue is the second most common eye color, with 8% of the population having blue eyes. Yet still, around 80% of humans have brown eyes. But we went from zero blue-eyed people to having about 700 million of them. Scientists believe that some genetic mutation happened that limited the production of melanin in several people. When two people with this limited ability met, the first ever person with blue eyes was born. We take half of our genes from the mother and half from the father. Genes responsible for the eye color are involved in production and storage of melanin, and there are eight of them. To keep it simple, let's count all of these genes as one. There can be two types. The first one is big A that produces a lot of melanin and means having brown eyes. It's the dominant one. The other one is a small A, which doesn't produce melanin and carries the blue eye color. It's a recessive one. In the beginning, every person had the combination of genes looking like big A plus another big A. Every generation was taking one big A from the mother and one big A from the father, and everyone had brown eyes as a result. Then, when the mutation happened, some people got the recessive gene of blue eyes, a small A. Now, some people had the combination of big A and a small A. But their eyes were still brown because those are dominant. So it doesn't matter for you personally if you carry this gene, but you can transmit it further down the line. Now, there's one person who carries the blue eye gene, and they meet a person who doesn't. This couple has equal chances of transmitting either type of genes down their lineage, but in any case, their posterity will have brown eyes. But if the person who carries the gene of low melanin meets another one who carries it, the story will be different. In 75% of cases, those who come after them will still have brown eyes because they will have a combination of either big A and small A or that of two big A's. But in another 25% of the cases, they'll get the combination of two small A's and will have blue eyes. That's how scientists think the first blue-eyed person appeared. First, the mutation happened, and then two people with this rare mutation had to meet and create a family. Most likely, it happened in Europe. European countries are still ones with the highest proportion of blue-eyed people. On average, 8% of people in the world have blue eyes. In the United States, around 17% of the population have them. But in Finland and Estonia, over 85% of the population are blue-eyed. 
So even though there are not so many people with blue eyes, they're not disappearing. On the contrary, we're only getting more of them. There are lots of people who carry the mutation causing the blue eye color, even though their own eyes are brown, so they can pass it on. The same is true for red-haired people. Worldwide, 1-2% of people have red hair, but in Ireland and Scotland, there are more of them, with about 10% in Ireland and 6% in Scotland. Red hair is also caused by a mutation. It causes decreased production of dark pigment eumelanin, so red-haired people often have pale skin. The same mutation also increases the production of pheomelanin, a pigment that makes the hair red. This pigment is also responsible for freckles. They're a way for your skin to protect itself from the sun. Under sun exposure, cells start to produce more melanin to make the skin darker and protect it from sunlight. That's why people have more freckles during the sunny time of the year. Just like with the blue eyes, the mutation of having red hair is recessive, and some people carry it without even knowing it. We never know what we have in us, so it's hard to predict what our descendants will look like. Being able to drink milk and consume dairy products is a privilege some people gained thanks to another mutation. Thousands of years ago, when people grew older, they would lose their ability to digest milk and dairy products because they developed lactose intolerance. No one could drink a glass of milk without feeling at least a bit sick afterwards. Until around 12,000 to 10,000 years ago, when farming became a big part of people's lives and another mutation occurred. It led to lactose tolerance, allowing adults to digest lactose without any problem. But even now, only around 35% of adults are lactose intolerant. Imagine all the people with different hair and eye color, with different bodies, faces, and noses. We're all different, but all humans are 99.9% .9 alike in their genome. All the differences between us are due to just 0.1% of the variation in the genome. We also share about 96% of our DNA with chimpanzee and around 90% with Abyssinian domestic cat. Mutations made us who we are. Millions of years ago, mutations in two genes started to build protein that moved glucose from muscles into brains. This glucose flow boosted the development of the brain and made it grow bigger. Another mutation that happened a bit later boosted humans' dexterity, making it possible to control our hands better and eventually to write. A mutation that occurred around 3 to 4 million years ago helped us get rid of most of our body hair. The next one helped us learn how to talk. Apes, for example, have air sacs that allow them to make loud noises. But these air sacs make it impossible to say distinctive vowel sounds and modify the speech. Humans have lost them and they manage to learn to speak. We're still evolving. Scientists believe that humans will learn to affect the natural genome and will be able to choose what they look like. This might lead to most people's appearance being a thing of fashion more than anything, meaning we might be more similar to each other than ever. But apart from that, if we allow ourselves to evolve naturally, scientists predict we will mutate to fit into new environments. With the human eagerness to colonize other planets, we'll probably manage to achieve that. If people start living further away from the sun where there is less sunlight, humans' eyes will probably become bigger. Our skin might get darker to protect humans from the UV radiation outside of Earth's protective ozone layer. Our nostrils might get bigger to make it easier to breathe.